very good evening to all on behalf of srec and src alumni association i welcome various heads of the departments faculty members alumni friends for the 89th webinar talk series importance of open source contribution i welcome kishore chandran of alumnus 2012 triple e i welcome you sir mr kishore chandran is currently working as senior technical lead at mercedes benz research and development he previously worked in accenture in various capacities like team lead software product and platform engineering principal engineer and senior development engineer before that he worked in fss as senior software engineer and software engineer and also he worked in hcl technologies as software engineer mr kishore chandran has his schooling in vidya vikasini matriculation higher secondary school he is our proud alumnus of srec belong to 2008 to 2012 batch electrical and electronics engineering he also completed mtech data science and engineering from bits pilani work integrated through work integrated learning program he is expertized in java spring framework and java web series i welcome you sir for this webinar i hand over the session to you hey thank you so much sudhar sir and a small correction like i am still pursuing my uh, mtech like it's not yet uh, completed like i'm just i completed just an year i mean one sem is completed and my second sem is still going on okay 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 thank you um yeah so i'll just share my screen okay hope you guys are able to see my screen yes sir visible okay so importance of open source contribution so when we say uh, open source hey, just a minute just a confirmation that uh, my voice is coming through right yes yes kishore it's clear yeah okay um okay so when we say open source contribution there are like uh, from our childhood times we have been using uh, multiple softwares for our uh, own uh, purposes like uh, it can range from multiple things like uh, vlc media player uh, mozilla firefox we have been into this open source even without we knowing that uh, uh, we are using this like so these are all some of the softwares which we have used in the past but we didn't know that these are all open source so it could be firefox it could be vlc media player mysql uh, different flavors of linux ubuntu uh, mac is not one but uh, other flavors of linux uh, many of them are open source so why do we actually need open source like it is to bring the world to a place where uh, anybody uh, anybody can use uh, anything for free and uh, you can use it to modify it distribute it for uh, different purposes so that is the main reason why uh, uh, the open source was introduced so when we say open source the source file of the software that is uh, that we are going to use is uh, available to all so that is what an open source means so if if we say it is free to use that doesn't mean uh, it's uh, the op it is an open source software so if we see there is something called google chrome google chrome is free to use but it is not an open source okay whereas there is a browser called chromium so chromium is an scaled down version of uh, google chrome but where the chromium is free to use but google chrome is not so anything that is free is not open source anything whose source that you can see that is what an open source actually means okay so why do we need open source okay so in this current world where we talk about data privacy and uh, multiple problems with regards to uh, data theft and are these data being used uh, wisely how are these data saved in the servers so when all these things come in uh, there, there should be a transparency in what we do so i previously i told you an example of chrome and i mean google chrome and the chromium browser right so chromium is open source and whatever you browse in chromium is you can be very sure that uh, 
uh, it has not been utilized in uh, any bad manner but when you use google chrome you cannot say that with confidence because there are some parts of uh, chrome which is not open sourced which is still inside google's own repositories so which means whatever you do in chromium is transparent whatever you do in google chrome is not that transparent so transparency is the one thing that open source gives you okay adoption and remixing so there are times that uh, maybe uh, for an uh, end user this might not be uh, visible when you say adoption but there are times that different software industries rely on these open source um something like uh, you guys would have been aware of uh, log4j uh, so log4j recently it has been in the news all around right so it is an open source software or an open source jar or an open source plugin log4j is something that has been there in this industry for time immaterial so close to 8 7 years it has been here and it is going to be here for uh, for a pretty long time so why do uh, we use open source softwares in our proprietary softwares is that you don't want to reinvent things you can adopt them in and make sure that uh, you can do your own code on that open source itself uh so that is one thing uh, one good thing with open source when you know the source you know that you can edit it and you can do whatever you want okay and collaboration okay so collaboration is more like adoption only like you can actually uh, collaborate with them also like we it when there is a problem in an open source software you can collaborate with them and uh, you can work with them to make sure that the software is better for the future okay so we'll we'll see about this collaboration in the further topics to come okay how will it help you so uh, okay open source is there why should i contribute this question will be there with all of you guys right so somebody is developing i'm using it i'm getting it for free but still uh, you, you what will it uh, help to you so right say do i get any money no do they get any money again no maybe in the form of monetization monetization they do get some money but uh, that doesn't help much okay so how many times we have used wikipedia and every time you go into wikipedia it asks for some some sort of donation give me at least this much uh, it is to keep our servers running all these uh, ads you get right uh, it's not an ad actually all these uh, requests that you get right so how many of you would have contributed to that no nobody would have done that out of 100 maybe one or two would have done that so that is the uh, thing that uh, we do to the uh, these open source softwares we don't even pay them uh, properly for uh, what they give to us so these contributions are something that will make us feel like we are giving something back to the society or say like uh, wikipedia has helped us throughout our schooling throughout our college through even in uh, uh, your uh, Uh, office work wikipedia is going to guide you to some extent so we have been used it and we have we are used wikipedia thoroughly but have we have ever thought about contributing to it no uh, so uh, by means of money is one way of contribution so i'm not going to talk about that now so other ways also you can contribute to wikipedia is like uh, you can edit its documents there are hundreds of documents which needs uh, citation which means you have to go and review those uh, softwares to make sure that uh, uh, whatever written there in wikipedia is uh, correct so that is one thing so uh, this is one way that you can give back to what you are what uh, you have already read okay uh, one more thing what do you get out of it okay so one thing is each when you contribute to multiple softwares of uh, Uh, multi, my open source software say like i'm contributing to uh, log4j say like i'm contributing to some of the libraries in java some of the libraries in python so when i do this they would have followed some good practices they would have followed some coding techniques they would have their own way of coding styles so those styles you get to learn and uh, with those styles uh, you will be able to uh, uh, you will be able to develop your projects like say like my project might not have all the good uh, practices that is there around the globe 
but when i uh, try to contribute to all these open source softwares i get to know uh, i get to know what they are uh, uh, what they are doing with these good practices what are the good practices that they have how can i incorporate them into my own uh, proprietary projects that i work in so this is one good thing that you get when you contribute to these open source pro projects uh so one more way is uh say like you grow in your career stack right so basically i started as a software engineer currently i stay as an senior technical lead so after this maybe like uh, i go for a promotion or something i go like, uh, you come to a place where uh, you are like halted like uh, you don't know how to move fur further so that time you you are like your pyramid gets shorter right basically when you move to the top the pyramids are short um so what happens is so if there is an option that i am a senior tech lead and they wanted to promote me and there is one more senior tech lead they want to promote him also so what is the differential factor that i can have so how can i prove myself that i am a uh, better uh, software developer so how can i say that i am better than that other person so one thing that will be is that uh, uh, it will help uh, it will this one gives us a good job job profile in our github repos where it will definitely say us that okay this guy has done so many open source projects also apart from he contributing to our uh, uh, company so what happens is that your job profiles get built in your own domain say like if i contribute to other open source softwares in java they will definitely know that this guy knows a bit more java than the other senior tech lead who has not contributed to the open source wing so they basically know okay this guy is better this guy knows more good practices than the other so this is one way that you can make sure your current job profile is better okay and one more thing is that you will be able to make sure that your uh, other job profile say like i am a java developer throughout my years of career i have been a java developer only okay so supposedly i want to switch my uh, profile so from a java developer i want to get into a data uh, data science wing or i want to become a python developer so to do this i cannot go ahead for an interview saying boss uh, i am i have done my uh, data science engineering in uh, which so just give me a data science job they will definitely offer me a job but that would be of an fresher standard or maybe an entry level standard entry level in the sense maybe or three years experience profile is what they will hire me because they know like though i have an eight years of uh, uh eight years of experience it, it is not on uh, and data science it is totally on java so it is not on python either so what happens is that they need to make sure that my profile is matching their jo job that is required so what i can do is that i can make sure that i can contribute more on some uh, data science libraries in python or something related to python which will guide uh, uh data science or ml so this is just an example that i am taking it can be for any jobs that you aspire for when you make sure that uh, you are building your open source profile in such a way that your uh, skill set is uh, inclined towards data science also when you look for a data science job you will be able to get that uh, job easier than that of uh, uh, you going in as a fresher or going in as an entry level developer in that profile in the sense i say that i am an 8 years uh, experience in java but if i switch to data science i'll be treated as an 3 year guy or an even as a fresher so i don't want that to avoid that this will aid you a lot to switch your jobs profile okay this is one more reason to make sure that you are going for this open source contributions okay so this is a topic which might not be relevant but uh, since most of the uh, people up here would be in academicia so uh, this could help you your hey, help to enlighten the students to know why the students should contribute to open source okay so why students will need uh, this is addressed towards the students okay so this will help them know what's and how's of the industries so you will get to know okay this is how the industry functions this is what the industry will do when in case of an issue something that is comes up like this okay so this is the, this will definitely help you uh, okay one more thing that i get to hear when i come for an interview inter campus for mock interviews 
and also when i sit for an uh, interview with the uh, freshers who are hired towards towards my kind of company so what they say is that they have been exposed to programming in their second year okay early second year so when they have completed the fourth year it has been at least uh, two years that they have lost touch with the programming so they say sir we have uh, been we have learned it in my second year and i have totally lost my programming touch so give me some time i'll prepare so these are different things that the students come and say us so to avoid this so they have lost they have got some exposure towards programming in their second year after that they can try to contribute towards these open source softwares so that what happens is that they don't lose the touch with the programming this is one thing that they can always do and even before they start their career they are getting to know how to collaborate with different people so it may be whatever open source that they choose they have to collaborate with them and develop so that will definitely help them get to understand what the industry is expecting what the industry is doing how they can uh, get exposed towards the industry so this is one way to get exposed towards the industry okay so one more important thing is that you can always showcase your git profile to the interviewers you can definitely say that i have this many number of badges in my git you can always say you can you have done so many prs in uh, your git so uh, my code is in some software some open source software this one you can always say so what actually happens is that the interview gets impressed okay this guy has done some open source software so we can definitely hire him so this guy already knows a lot of things so this is one thing this is totally concentrated towards the students and since most of the people up here are professors also so i thought i'll share this also in here okay how do i contribute so this is the most important question so you explained that okay what is open source so how do i even contribute so these are all the key points that we have to take into consideration for choosing an open source project where i can contribute so first thing is the programming language so when i say programming language you have to choose where you are going to contribute which programming language you are going to contribute so i am a java developer i am i going to build my profile in java itself as an open source also so i have to choose java so i am studying data science so do i need to uh, incline myself towards uh, python also or ml and data science things also so again i have to take python there so or some somebody else say so so i'm into automobile industry so i think like i need to learn some embed c so should i uh, develop my open source uh, skills towards my embed c so this one you have to make sure you have to answer this question first which programming language am i going to pick so next would be a type of project so type of project is like uh, what uh, what problem am i going to address in the project so some projects would be like uh, security vulnerability problems uh, some projects would be like totally an automobile related problems some would be like a data science related problems so you have to choose what type of uh, uh project you want to address this is one thing and one more is that uh, the volume of the project so what when i say volume how big the project is okay so there are projects which are uh, which is so huge and it is handled or contributed by hundreds of members okay and uh, uh, it it is also used by lakhs and lakhs of people something like kubernetes so kubernetes is like it's a very huge project and it will take even days to even set up the code in your local so but as whereas if you see log4j it is also a very famous thing it is used by nearly everything in your uh, uh, software world needs logging and at least uh, 60 to 70% of logging would have happened via log4j so log4j if you see it was managed only by three people so you you have to make sure that how big the project is you have to make sure if you are an initial uh, contributor you shouldn't aim high and go towards the larger projects because the building takes time and you have to understand things it takes a lot of time all these things happens so for a beginner it would be better if we are picking a smaller projects in the programming language and the project type that we are trying to address and one more important thing is you have to get to know how github works when i say how github works it's not only uh, how you commit how you commit your code how you manage your code in your local how do you push code all these things 
not just the commands or the GUI with you push and get your codes. There are other aspects of GitHub like managing the bugs, tagging the bugs, how you can look at the, uh, make sure that your GitHub's uh, bug reports are properly inclined or uh, feature features are properly separated, how they are managed. There are a lot of things in GitHub uh, which is present, which can be used for all these purposes. So we have to make sure that you get to know GitHub totally. Okay, and join the communities. Okay, when I say open source, there are a lot of communities that are available. Like when I say uh, uh, Kubernetes, so Kubernetes has its own uh, open source uh, communities. And when I say Log4j, Log4j, though it is managed by just three people, it has its own community where people from who uses it are in present inside it and they say, like they feel that this feature could be there and they discuss about the feature. They would have create already created a feature request in GitHub and they would say this feature can be inclined like this or this feature can be made better like this. This discussions will happen over the community. This community can be in your Slack, Discord or multiple ways these communities are handled. Each projects have different ways of handling it. So you have to find those communities and make sure you join them. And uh, the first point that I said was how to contribute was programming language. So is programming language the only skill that is needed for GitHub or open source contribution? If you see, it is not the case. So there are other aspects of open source contribution that is needed. If you are a project manager or an uh, tester or somebody who just manages people in the IT industry or you are a content creator, these things also have a vital role in open source. So there are times that uh, these open source software need some proper documentations. So these are places where content makers can pitch in. And there are times that uh, few of the projects are being used abundantly and there are more feature requests and bug, uh, bugs that fall in, but it is very difficult to manage all those things. So these project managers could manage the, who understood GitHub more properly, more, who knows how to manage GitHub can make sure that they incline the uh, separate the bugs, features, all these things properly so that any developer comes in, he can definitely go and see the tag and take it in. So here all skills are welcome. It is not only that uh, only an uh, programmer needs to come in. Okay, so even if you don't know zero programming, you can still do open source contribution. Okay, moving to the next important thing. Okay, there are different ways in which you can contribute. So whatever I discussed so far is like joining an existing project. Okay, so this is one important aspect, which is the easiest of all. Like it is like joining a company. So entrepreneurship is a uh, difficult task, whereas joining an existing company is an easier task, right? So that is the reason I discussed about this alone. Uh, so you can join an existing project and make sure you can do an open source contribution. This is the most easiest way. And there are two entrepreneurial uh, ways in which you can contribute. The first way would be uh, create a new project. You have a new idea and you say that uh, you feel that you won't be having a uh, uh, fair share of market. Uh, like you, if you commercialize it, you feel that uh, it will not be a successful one. So you want to make sure that it should be an open source. So if you have a new idea, you can directly create it as an open source and spread the world about the spread spread the world the news about this new open source project and make sure your open source contribution starts there. And one more thing would be, uh, say like you have an you the the product is already there, but it is paid one. Say like uh, if you see, uh, I don't see an uh, open source software for Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom is there, right? So for this, there is no alternative that you can find. There is an alternative, but it is it is not even close to what Lightroom is capable of. So you can, there is already a commercial software there. You know that and you can say like, I want to make sure that uh, there is an open source software for it. I can create, you, you can create that and you, you should have a create and initial build for it, okay? So once you create that, you can spread the world, the news that there is something that is coming out which will compete against Lightroom and uh, it would be open source so people will start contributing. So this is one way These are the three different ways in which you can start your contribution journey and As I told the easiest of them all is joining an existing project or maybe like I you can join the existing project get to know how this works 
and you can create an alternative project or create your all new idea and create a new project also so this is one and just to give you an idea how these uh, companies are working so this is this this is just a numbers how uh, how many open source contributions are going in how the community is growing so if you see these numbers all the companies up here are all the top companies which everybody will dream of joining so when these companies are even contributing to open source when we dream of joining them if we are contributing to open source they will also i uh, make sure that okay this guy has done something with open source this would be a good hire this can this is again for profile building purpose that is the only reason i wanted to show this slide that there are companies even the big companies try to contribute to open source so that the world becomes a better place to live in so that is what i have with me so is there any questions from you? i think i didn't take much time i'm up to it. so do i have any questions do i have any questions yeah sudhakar beautiful presentation uh, see uh, when we say open source uh, uh, when a company or a product developer gives it or makes it open uh, what is this is benefit out of that okay there is no benefit sir that is the uh, that is the bottom line uh, say like see uh, one benefit would be monetization like they do get uh, money when it is monetized but it is very very less that uh, it will not even be enough for if there is a three developers who are developing it won't be even be enough for one developer who is sitting there so that is not going to do any financial benefit the one thing is that it is like just like giving back to the society so that is the only thing that you get apart from that your profile gets built that is the one good thing that you can say so as a company do google get any uh, uh, big thing out of this say google has made sure that uh, some parts of kubernetes is open source so since it is open source do google get anything out of it if you ask me no uh, one good thing is that since it is open source people will start believing in it that is the only good thing that you will get apart from that financial benefits they don't get any okay so if as a consumer if i use that open source and if i and if i code something new uh, will it mm -hmm. get reflected to the developer yes you can do that say like uh, say you, you would have used vlc media player definitely so you say today you are using vlc media player and you say like i need some feature it can be any feature like uh, uh, some feature in vlc media player you feel that you want it and you have coded that feature also so you know vlc media player is open source you have taken the source code of it you can co you have coded that feature in and you feel you want to push it to their repo so that everybody else can use it you can use github to push it to their repo the developers the current developers of vlc media player will definitely review that code and make sure there is no miscellaneous code that you have put in there uh, all these review things will happen and once that code has been authorized it will be pushed to the main repo of vlc media player so from then on a particular version of vlc media player will be released from then on if you download that particular version of media player uh, everybody will get your new feature feature out so that one today you can make sure that you if you don't wish to push it to their repo it will be there in your log for you alone so if you are pushing it to the outside world it will be available for everybody in the world thank you so in one way the developer pushes his code to the outside world and if the number of users increase then definitely at one some point of time he can actually monetize it or put it as a commercial is, is that possible from open source if a developer can convert it into a commercial package um a totally commercial package that doesn't happen normally so one example i already told is that chromium and google chrome right so the chromium is the uh, free version or the open sourced version whereas google chrome is the uh, adoption of uh, uh, chromium browser okay so the chromium is all, will always remain open source and people who ever contribute to this chromium repository will 
continue to grow and those things will come out so whatever you add in chromium will in a way reflect in google chrome also but google chrome in turn has some features which are present only to google chrome that will never come to uh, chromium so in case google today plans to make sure google chrome commercial that is always possible but uh, uh, if it tries to make chromium uh, commercial that will not happen because its source is already out and even if you make it commercial people will know what is there so they can come up with an uh, um, other version uh, somebody will uh, say today chrome uh, chromium makes it chrome makes chromium as an uh, paid one apple would have already downloaded chromium's uh, code apple will say a new release of chromium and say they are going to make sure that is paid also so this doesn't normally happen but that is also there like you can make sure that uh, you can monetize it but uh, they normally prefer a different branch to monetize chromium will always remain free if they want to make google chrome paid they can definitely make it because it chrome contains some source that is hidden yeah audience if you have any other questions you can put forth to kishore yeah kishore for the benefit of students and uh, uh, actually i belong to the mechanical department and so maybe my question may be irrelevant but still uh, for the benefit of all like uh, how can i trace this uh, these open source software simply i google it i get it or uh, uh, is there any where i can really go and find all these open source softwares available sir general google will definitely fetch you this uh, like just like that you can google and few open source software if you ask it will definitely fetch you it that is one way uh, one more thing would be uh, uh, there is something called open source io i forgot the website maybe i can ping the uh, websites which will give you the links to the open source software but the first thing would be like uh, any big companies they definitely have their own open source wings so for mercedes if you see open source dot mercedes benz dot com so that is the open source wing of mercedes so mercedes has its own open source uh, things and those are maintained there so previously for pramadi pramadi had its own open source wing open source dot pramadi dot com was the open source website so if you go to google google also has its own open source software list so normally you go to a company's profile that pro company most of the companies will definitely have their uh, open source wings uh, when i say companies i'm talking about the big companies maybe the uh, mid level companies might not be having their own open source things or uh, there are companies which are very secure they don't want to uh, send some open source things so those companies will definitely be there but most of the big companies will have their own uh, open source related things in a separate uh id in their own websites separate domain thank you the audience if you have any questions you can uh, come forward okay in case there are uh, no other questions uh, uh, kishore uh, uh, wasant kadirvel sir uh, shall we go for the closing remarks yes prof sir yes sir Yeah. and definitely sir in case anybody wants some uh, guidance or help regarding this open source always uh, you can feel free to reach me out great great thank, thank you. you thank you so that was kishor chandran of 2008 2012 uh, triply passed out uh, thank you kishor chandran for uh, making this evening a memorable one with uh, more insights into open source and its uses uh, thank you so much uh, you have made this evening uh, much more enjoyable for uh, most of us uh, uh, thank you so much uh, thank you department of uh, triply uh, for uh, roping in kishor chandran for this uh, webinar number 89 Uh, thank you audience for uh, joining in numbers student friends and alumni and all faculty members thank you one and all thank you thank you bro thank you